All right, we all know why you're here. Yeah, it's real. Thanks to Rick and Morty's third episode of season six, Bethic Twinstinct, Beth x Beth is a thing. But honestly, from the preview clips and even the subtext in the season premiere, I feel like we all saw this coming, or at least you should have seen it coming. It's okay if I come around sometimes. That could be nice. That's a cute outfit. And yeah, the internet is gonna be talking about it a lot, and so am I. But Bethic Twinstinct is a lot more than just Bethic Twincest. This is once again a great character study on Beth herself, as well as a really interesting commentary on how people attempt to take control of their own lives when so much of it is actually out of our hands. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the Beth stuff, but also so much more. Let's dive in. Thanks for doing it moms very selfless of you but first if you enjoy this video not only do i have a bunch of other rick and morty videos for you to check out but i'll be covering the remainder of season six over the next couple of months as well i would really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned i really enjoy talking about this show and on top of that if you're looking for even more in-depth rick and morty discussion my podcast cartoons that curse has covered all five seasons so far and we'll be covering season six as soon as it wraps up so check us out on any podcast platform or the video version here on youtube Thanks. So yeah, we all know people are here to talk about Beth banging herself. I get it. And we will. I do expect that half of the audience is going to have a real problem with this part of the story. The internet basically went through this all last year with Loki. But I think Beth as a character has taken such a fascinating journey. And honestly, when you track her development over the course of the entire series, this kind of makes so much sense. Beth and Space Beth essentially represent these massive, conflicting aspects of Beth. The half of her that loves Jerry and her children and can't imagine being without them, and the half of her that resents her domestic life for preventing her from accomplishing her wildest dreams. We get hints of this stuff from some of the earliest episodes of the show. Rixty Minutes in particular explored this pretty in depth. When Beth and Jerry use these interdimensional goggles to see through the eyes of their alternate selves, we learned that Summer was an accident that led to Beth and Jerry getting married and starting their family, which likely led to a lot of that resentment. Beth's family life means there are all of these massive unknowns and what-ifs in the life where she took a different path. And that's what led to the clone Beth dilemma beginning in season three. Dad, I'm out of excuses to not be who I am. And not only does Beth have all of these what-ifs and questions about what she could have accomplished, she also has a very high opinion of herself, definitely something she inherited from her father. But I also think she has an insecurity that maybe this inflated ego was undeserved. As long as these questions were all what-ifs, she wouldn't know whether or not she really could have accomplished all of these other dreams on a divergent path. But when she learns that Rick did clone her, allowing her to live out both of these potential lives, she gets that confirmation. She was shown proof that without being shackled to her family life, she could literally become a badass space rebel who takes down corrupt governments and leads ragtag groups of space pirates. But on the flip side, we also see proof that Space Beth has not entirely removed her desire to be a part of her family's life. She's coming around Earth more often to spend time with them. She even brought Morty the game console he wanted, the Publikian GamePod XL. I never got you that. Space Mom did. She's in for the holiday weekend, remember? It's clear that though she has removed herself from that life and pursues her wildest dreams in space, this version of Beth still has a connection to her family. When she and Beth hook up in her apartment orbiting Earth, we actually see a family photo from years prior proof that Space Beth still holds on to that connection. And I think that the fact that Beth has these two conflicting aspects of herself is actually what attracts her to herself. Not only is she a bit narcissistic as a person with that high opinion of herself, but she also has these two halves that live out these entirely different lives, and each half admires the other in a major way. Are we in love with our Ourself? I mean, does that make us the most or the least healthy woman in the universe? To me, seeing the history of Beth's life and her resentments and her insecurities and her regrets, this genuine attraction to this alternate version of herself really tracks. It says so, so much about her character and her journey, even though it's likely going to become the internet's biggest Rule 34 search term for a few weeks. But though they are the same person in so many ways as showcased in these scenes... Favorite Culkin. Kieran! <laughs> They also obviously have these key differences as they've developed on their own over the last couple of years living different lives. Which is why I think my favorite scene is the one that takes place just before they finally get together at Space Beth's apartment. It's more of an existential conversation than anything. It's like Beth is engaging in a really fascinating form of therapy. She's given the opportunity to have a real and genuine conversation with herself. And I know it sounds like we all can do that at any time, but the reality is, is that we lie to ourselves all the time. We get to say anything to each other. Things we'd never say to anyone else, even ourselves. It's not easy to have a clear perspective on something you yourself are going through when you're going through it. But imagine if you could literally get an outside perspective from yourself. 
Someone who fully knows and understands your fears and desires and insecurities, but also whose judgment isn't clouded by the peaks and valleys of the emotions that can come with navigating the more difficult aspects of life. Someone who knows you entirely, but can give you an objective opinion about what you're feeling. I don't know, I just think that's a really cool idea, and metaphorically something we should kind of all strive for, the ability to be honest with ourselves even when it's most difficult. Not entirely possible, but a cool thought. And honestly, this is sort of why the idea of figuring out which Beth is the clone and which isn't doesn't actually matter, right? They are literally both Beth. They both represent wants and desires and insecurities that Beth has. And in a way, Beth actually allowing herself to love herself is sort of her taking back control of her life. She sees this space Beth version of herself who has gotten to live out these dreams, and she is for sure envious of that, but she isn't capable of living that life. It's out of her control. But loving the part of her that could live that life that is in her control. And so much of this episode is about control. When both Morty and Summer catch wind of what's going on between Beth and Space Beth, it makes them feel like they've lost control of their lives. They know this secret that they shouldn't know, and they also know how it could ruin their family entirely. Like they're living in this house of cards that they know at any moment is going to collapse around them. So they just completely bury themselves in a video game, which honestly I can relate to. Sometimes living a whole virtual life is a great distraction from the difficulties of actual life. Diving into something you actually can control. Some of us need all the control we can get. Ugh, you. I mean, look at Jerry's toast at the beginning of the episode, where he flat out says what he would do if anything happened to his relationship with Beth. Just to uh, be clear, I was saying I'd kill myself. Jerry, oh God, we know. But for someone like Jerry, this literally is his form of control. He feels so little control over his life that he basically uses these threats of self-harm to attempt to control his wife's actions. Don't you dare hurt me or I'll kill myself. It's really pathetic, actually, and it's also just sad. Jerry is so insecure that this is the only thing he feels he is capable of doing to retain any semblance of control over his own life. And on top of this, we see that Rick installed this pill bug defense at Jerry's request, a defense that keeps him perfectly safe in this hibernation cocoon until he himself decides he's ready to come out. In his own sad way, he's taken control. And before the Beths have a chance to eternal sunshine themselves to try and reset everything back to the way it was, Jerry literally comes out of his shell and showcases some of the strongest character development we've ever seen from him. All of you, grow up. Jerry, what the hell? Ooh, Unrolled. plot twist. Deus ex husbanda. Jerry acknowledges how messed up and unfair it was for him to threaten to kill himself and instead actually has the uncomfortable confrontation with his wife. Wives? with the Beths. And through this conversation where they very openly and clearly communicate what they want and need, they sort of become like a thruple. And metaphorically, it means that Beth doesn't have to choose between herself and her family. She can literally choose both. It's kind of beautiful. And through this weird Beth, Space Beth, and Jerry thruple, it honestly feels like they've formed a healthier and more communicative relationship than they had ever had over the course of five seasons as a regular couple. Though it's at Morty and Summer's expense as they hear the entire sexcapade through the walls. Those poor kids. Why? Discovery Channel! Discovery Channel, why? This is for sure going to be a controversial episode of Rick and Morty. I know people are going to be mad and comfortable by the Beths hooking up with each other, and I get it, but I really love this story as a journey of self-exploration and self-acceptance. I actually think that there are a lot of great ideas and lessons that can be taken from a story like this, about regrets and second-guessing our lives, about not grieving the people we could have been, but accepting the people that we are, like Beth, or not letting the regrets and what-ifs prevent us from becoming more realized versions of ourselves, like Jerry. These are lessons that can be applied across so many major aspects of our lives, too. Whether we're questioning our general life path, or the relationships we've fostered or lost, or the career choices we've made. So far after three episodes of Rick and Morty season six, there is so, so much I love about how they're approaching these stories from a character perspective. I'm not sure if this season is going to win over the people who have been down on the last couple of seasons of the show, but I do know that I feel like there is so much more to chew on thematically and developmentally for the characters than in so much of the last couple of seasons. While the premiere really leaned into the serialized storytelling and the lore, it also had incredibly introspective character moments. Things like the tragedy of Survivor Jerry's life in Morty's original universe, and then the fact that Morty himself had to reckon with what he had done to his original family and his original home. Rick having to choose to save his newer chosen family over chasing down and finally getting revenge on Rick Prime, who took his actual biological family away from him. Something that we literally saw him spend the majority of 
his life trying to do before he started up the life that we know for him with R. Morty. Last week's episode was such a fascinating dive into various aspects of Morty's personality and the potential he possesses if you were able to hone in on particular aspects of that personality. Back when season 4 aired, I actually tried to cover every episode of the season here on the channel, and I just was not having a good time. For season 5, I opted to only make a video when I really felt inspired to, which only led to a video on the Morty and Planetina episode, as well as one on the season finale. But this season, each and every episode has had something thematically or story-wise that I've been able to really latch onto, something that has really made me think and want to dissect and explore the ideas being presented. And as a fan of the show and the characters, that leaves me really satisfied. I do think that I'm maybe not laughing as much at the show quite as much as I did back in like seasons one through three. It does still make me laugh, but now that we're 50 plus episodes into this journey, I love that they're opting to really explore the journeys that these characters have gone on who they've become, what their trauma and insecurities have done to them as people, and how they're growing and overcoming those traumas. And it generally has me really eager to see what the show is going to keep doing with the remainder of the season. Next week does look like it's a sort of more classic episodic sci-fi romp, so we'll see how I'm feeling when I aim to cover that one. But for now, I love how this season is getting my brain turning about these characters and about these ideas. By the end of the episode, they all say goodbye to Space Beth, but I anticipate that she will still be around relatively often. It seems like they've formed a whole new dynamic with her, Beth, and Jerry, and it would be a real waste to just let that be the solution and not an ongoing development. I don't think she'll be in like every other episode, but I bet we'll see her one or two more times this season. At least I hope so. But what did you guys think of Bethic Twinstinct? Did the Beth X Beth thing turn you off, or is that why you're here? Did you like the character exploration behind it as much as I did? Let me know below in the comments, and of course, stay tuned for more. Peace! Johnny!